Last fall, I needed a new keyboard. I was sick and tired of using whatever off-the-shelf keyboards came with the PCs that I was testing. I wanted to upgrade, I wanted something good. So I was on a mission to find a great keyboard and I had no idea where to start. And I had seen some pretty cool looking keyboards popping up in other people's setups for a while now. I got way in over my head pretty quickly and I found myself deep within the mechanical keyboard rabbit hole. Squeeze. I don't know if that's the sound rabbits make or not. Probably, probably not. I have emerged from the hole, and this is my absolute noob's guide to mechanical keyboards. Let's go. So my journey started when I busted the keyboard mouse combo that came with like a Huion all-in-one that I had tested a while back. You maybe remember me holding back tears when my dongle got stuck and then broke off in a Surface Studio laptop that I was reviewing last fall. I wasn't upset about the keyboard no longer working. That wasn't the problem at all. I was upset because the US USB port on my brand new Surface didn't work anymore. I still go back every few weeks to try to pry out that little metal piece with no luck. I usually review tech that you could draw on, but this video, I'm branching out a little bit. It's it's the slow season for tech, February, March. There's not a lot today about art and illustration. However, if you are interested over at bradsartschool.com, I do have a newish course it's called Learn to Draw in 60 Days. Every day, new lesson builds upon what you practice the day before. Link down below in the description. There's a discount code currently available if you want to check that out to learn more. Okay. So the price of mechanical keyboards is all over the place. We're talking $35, $100, $200, wait, what, how? And honestly, you can go $500, $1,000 once you get into some of these like really high-end designer keyboards. But let's, let's break this down, start at the basics. You can go on Amazon, grab a keyboard that looks good and be done. So that's exactly where I started. They sell them cheap. They have some cute keycaps and other fancy pants RGB lights on there. I'm really looking for a mechanical keyboard, right? I had been watching a whole bunch of YouTube videos and I wanted something that sounded cool like this. So I found this, this is the Mage G USB keyboard. It looks the part, it's got the keys, they're the right size, might have some kind of lights underneath the keys, and yeah, it's only $35. There are a lot of things that go into determining the price of a keyboard. First of all, is the size. Many sites list keyboards by percentages. For example, a 100% keyboard is something with all of the keys, the number pad, the arrow keys, all that fun stuff. 60% is more bare bones, no frills. This one is small, it doesn't even have it arrow keys on it. And basically from there, you can fill in the percentages, 65%, 75%, 80%, 96%. 96%. This bad boy is 100% and it's only $35, win-win. It's not just size that determines the price and the quality, it's features that matter too. Wireless is gonna cost more than wired, lights or no lights. Also, materials have a huge impact on price. That's really where I see the difference here. This keyboard is super lightweight, it's plastic, and while the keys are definitely clicky from a noise standpoint, Standpoint, they sound really hollow. It doesn't have that like satisfying chunk I'm going for. And when I first started using it, it was off kilter and it kind of jiggled a little bit. It turns out like the actual plastic shell was starting to come off. So you could really tell in the build quality that this was a very inexpensive keyboard. Once I snapped that back into place, there, there's nothing wrong with this keyboard. You can type on it. The keys are colored, so there's some aesthetics here. You can actually pop off some of the caps and replace them with some of the other color keys that it comes with. So it didn't feel good for me, but it's a fine keyboard. It works for what it needs to work for. But I really wanted to step this up. I want a really nice keyboard. So next up, I tried this. This is the Royal Axe 60% mechanical keyboard. And immediately I could tell the difference. This was a big step up in quality. This cost about twice as much. This was $65. Partially it was that price because it's the 60% version with only 66 keys, 67 keys. They have a different version that has 98 keys and that comes on in around $90. And immediately, as I start typing on this, I'm digging the sound of this. I'm digging the feel of this. This feels more substantial. It's got a nice plastic case around it that feels solid. It's definitely more weighted than the first keyboard that I tried. Plus, I have a lot of connection options here. I have Bluetooth. I can use a wireless dongle. I can plug it in via a USB-C cable that it comes with. I think the RGB generally looks really good with this color spectrum, this blue that I have here. They have a brown version. I'm not sure I'd like a rainbow RGB underneath brown. 
I don't think it'd work quite as well. And many of these things that have these lights under the keycaps are also customizable. So you can go in, choose different patterns, different colors, different things that you could do with those lights. So what makes this keyboard feel so much better than the last one? Those materials again. As you start to get up there with mechanical keyboards, what you find is that they're built in layers. Top layer are your keycaps. Then underneath that, you have your switches. Those go underneath your keycaps. This keyboard has a silicone pad for sound dampening so that it doesn't sound nearly as hollow or plasticky as the first one I tried. And it has a stabilizing layer as well. Now, one of the best parts of mechanical keyboards is how customizable they are. You can get different keycaps. You can swap out the switches. And this is where things can get a little bit overwhelming. Let's start by taking a look at the switches. These sit underneath the caps and there's different style switches that give your keyboard a different feel and sometimes a different sound. Keychron, who's a manufacturer I'm going to talk about in a little bit, they ended up sending me this little test kit to play with. It has all of these different switches and just testing these out, I could definitely feel the difference between the red switches that I have in one of my keyboards and the yellow switches, which are a little tighter. You know, it takes a little bit more force to push those down. Then there's the blue switches, which has like a little audible click at the end. So you can actually feel that key kind of pressing into place. When you have this many keys, the difference is incredibly subtle when you start using it. Sometimes the difference is the sound. Sometimes the difference is the feel. I think I like the ones that have just a little bit more resistance when you're going down. Those that you actually have to press a little bit harder to get something out of. That's, that's kind of where I'm going with this. And this is kind of obvious, but what's cool about a kit like this is it's relatively inexpensive. And it's a great way to find out which switches you like before you like invest in an entire set of them for your keyboard. So even though I'm happy with this little keyboard, I really want to know, you know, what happens if you take a bigger step up and go with one of those really expensive keyboards? What are those all about? So I picked up this one. This is the Keychron Q3. They just recently replaced this model with a new one. So you can't buy this one anymore, but I'll, I'll link to the newest one down below. This is the keyboard that I really wanted and ended up going with last fall. I I posted a photo on it on my Twitter. A lot of you replied to that. In fact, Keychron actually saw the photo that I posted. That's why they reached out to me with the switches and that sort of thing. They also sent me a low profile keyboard to test out. More on that in a minute. But talk about materials. First of all, this bad boy is heavy. It is pure metal, uh, all four pounds of it. This weighs more than most laptops. I picked this up because it had all those bells and whistles and I wanted to see what it feels like to get a really good keyboard. And while the last keyboard I tested, I felt was was good enough, I can definitely see the quality here. I still get the clackety keys, but they're not quite as loud. They're a little bit more dampened here. And I think what I'm hearing is the sound of the keys clicking as opposed to the sound of the keys like ricocheting off the like plastic body of the other one. I also thought that this keyboard was really nice base to build off of. Some of those other keyboards already come with colored keys and a colored case. This is a nice solid black case that I could put pretty much much any key on and make it look good. I ended up going out and, and finding some keycaps of my own. These are the latte caps from Drop. They're brown and kind of an off brownish color, like a very, very light brown. I really like the look of this. My office kind of has this wood look when I don't have all the lights on, so it works really well. And as a designer and an illustrator, one of the things that really attracted me to mechanical keyboards in the first place was really the aesthetics, how these things look. The world of keycaps is crazy. You can buy simple color kits like what I did, but there are enthusiasts out there making custom keycaps in all shapes and all sizes. Go to Kickstarter and search for keycaps if you really want to dive into the weeds. Another place to check out is Etsy. You want to see crazy, crazy stuff? Go to Etsy. Fancy monster keycaps, kitty paw keycaps, metal keycaps, the eye of Sauron keycaps. And I ran into a, a lot of like small businesses that do these like small runs of keycaps. And they almost run like Kickstarters. You have to get in early, you have to order the caps, and then you have to wait a few months for them to arrive. It's, it's really kind of a small business enthusiast market. But if you're willing to dive into that and willing to wait, you can get some really crazy cool stuff. So I do really like this keyboard, but I do come from the world of just typing online 
laptops or whatever I have around. And most of those are super low profile keyboards and going from a super low profile keyboard to this like larger keyed keyboard, I found myself accidentally oftentimes like hitting the wrong key or hitting multiple keys, hitting the caps lock key happens to me a lot. Along with the test switches, Keychron ended up sending me this like low profile keyboard to check out too. That was something I wasn't necessarily interested in to start with, but after I used this, I absolutely loved it. This is a 75% low profile K3 Max keyboard. Oh my gosh, this feels perfect. It's so much better than a laptop keyboard, but it is like easier for me to use coming from the laptop world jumping over to this thing. It just feels amazing. Everybody's a little bit different. This one was the perfect one for me and I'm, I'm kind of glad they sent it over. The downside here with a low profile keyboard is I still need to find some cool keycaps for it. The gray looks fine. I think it's solid, you know, got a little orange key off to the side. I could change out the enter key, came with some other little color keys that I can pop in there if I wanted to. But there are far less customizable options available for low profile keyboards than there are for the standard mechanical keyboards. So no almond toast cap locks for me. But wait, we are not done. This is where the casual world ends and the rabbit hole begins. Don't worry, we're just staying on the edge of the hole today. But there are a lot of people out there who build their own keyboards. Many of these keyboards you can buy unassembled and build yourself. For example, the one mechanical keyboard that I first got, the Q3, it has that option. You can swap out the board. You can add your own foam. Other insulators dampen in different ways that can either amplify the sound or mute it even more. And you've already seen how many different keycaps and switches are out there. This is all just scratching the surface. Some people even take out little paintbrushes and lube their own switches or paint their own cases. It's so much fun to geek out about this stuff. It's February and uh, February, March, as I said at the beginning of the video, kind of slow around here. Not a lot happens, not a lot of new stuff to review. So I am branching out with these videos and trying new things, but let me know what you think about this video. And if you have any ideas that you think, hey, Brad would really dig this and his audience might too, let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.